Have you ever wondered what the difference is between a PT1000 temperature sensor cartridge and a conventional thermistor cartridge on a 3D printer? And is it worth um, spending the extra on a PT1000? Uh, my personal take on it is that um, I don't get terribly excited about um, absolute accuracy of the temperature in the hot end. Because there are a lot of variables um, where we place the thermistor isn't measuring the temperature of the filament in the nozzle and it's that temperature that's really the important one. Um, I did a bit of an experiment and wrote it up on my blog that the um, effect of part cooling air being deflected back onto the nozzle can drop the temperature inside the nozzle by something like 8 degrees C. Whereas the thermistor buried in the hot block some distance away is unaffected by that deflected air. So what I tend to do is um, print a temperature tower when I get a new roll of filament. Um, particularly if it's a different type of filament that I haven't used before. And use whatever temperature that tells me is the best temperature to use for my machine with my part cooling solution and all the other things. Anyway, putting all that aside, um, somebody had been on my YouTube channel and uh, sent me a donation via PayPal um, to use for um, a PT1000 temperature sensor. So I felt a kind of a, a moral obligation to um, do some sort of a comparison between the PT1000 and a conventional um, thermistor. So with that in mind I bought a, a genuine E3D uh, PT1000 and also have uh, genuine E3D thermistors which I believe are Semitech 104 NTs or something like that. So I don't have any way of accurately um, calibrating temperature sensors. You need For that you need a, a, laborat a laboratory grade heat source of some sort, temperature bath. Best I could do was like iced water and boiling water which would give two points at zero and and 100 degrees C but we need to go much higher than that so I'm not um, so the comparison um, isn't looking at absolute accuracy I'm not saying which one is right and which one is wrong uh, but just to compare the difference between the two so with that in mind I needed to um, eliminate as many other environmental factors or whatever as I could so I made a, uh, a dummy heater block which is basically just a 20 mil by 20 mil by 10 mil and I bored a hole in the center 6 mil diameter to take the heater and then equidistant from that either side I bored 3 mil holes to take the PT1000 cartridge and a conventional thermistor cartridge and then I drilled and tapped a couple of M3 holes in between the temperature sensors and the heater and then put a screw and a, and a washer in there to hold the sensors in place. In addition to that I covered both the heater and the sensors, um, gave them a good coat of uh, boron nitride paste which is a, an excellent um, thermal conductor but a poor electrical conductor. It's what Slice Engineering use on their um, mosquito hot ends. So I assembled it and uh, waited for the boron nitride to set. So here's a, here's a quick picture of what it looked like. And then I hooked it up on my machine. Um, basically I just uh, disconnected the heater and temperature sensor and, and plugged the two temperature sensors into that. Um, I created a, another sensor on the duet board so I could see both on the web interface. Um, so that was created as an, as an extra, just as a sen sensor, it's not associated with the heater. So I used the PT1000, associated that with the heater, and then the thermistor as a, uh, an extra sensor. So I just plugged the wires into the, um, into the duet board and let the thing, uh, let the complete assembly hang in free air. So I did it in my garage, the garage door was shut so there's no draft or anything so 
And then the only other thing I wondered that might give different readings other than the sensors themselves would be the actual AD analog to digital conversion on the on the duet board. So I got onto the duet guys and they told me that there are all the documentation states there are two banks of ADC and they confirmed that the inputs that I was uh, planning on using use the same ADC bank so there won't be any measurement errors due to using different ADC banks. Um, if there is an error, it will be the same for both. So then here's here's how it looked, just hanging on the machine. Don't try this at home, folks. It's uh, rough and ready. Looking at the data sheet for Semitech, the spec for the thermistor um, was a measurement range of minus 50 to plus 300. There is no mention of an absolute maximum. For the PT-1000, um, I don't know exactly which one E3D use. Um, they just say that it's good for 500 degrees C. So I thought I would just heat it to, well, let's go mad, 500 degrees C. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Could just destroy the um, thermistor. Um, so that's basically what I did. I heated it uh, in 50 degree increments. Um, took a note of the ambient and then 50 degree increments up to 500 degrees C. My expectation was that the thermistor would go crazy over 300 degrees C and would probably get destroyed at 400 plus. Um, that's not what I found. So here's a quick um, screenshot showing the um, showing the temperature for the PT100 which is the tall temperature and then um, this next one is uh, showing the extra so that's where I got the temperature reading from. So then what I did was heat it to 50 degrees C, wait for it two or three minutes to stabilize, note the PT1000 reading and then note the thermistor reading and I put those numbers into a spreadsheet. The heater I had was um, I think 60 watts which is a bit of a beast for that size um, block. It's a bit too big. So there was quite an overshoot on temperature. I did run a heater tune um, before I started, but it's still a big heater for a small block. I did that deliberately so I could ensure I could get up to 500 degrees C without any problems. But when I yeah started to heat it, two or three minutes, so it was quite an overshoot. Um, and it was taking a long time to come back down to the set temperature so the first few readings I just gave it two or three minutes to stabilize it was stable at sort of 52 very very slowly coming down so I took the reading at 52 and took both readings simultaneously so although that first reading might not have been um, right on the actual set point it was stable after that I did leave it to settle. Here's some further screenshots of the, the temperature chart. So moving on, these are the this is the actual results themselves. I went up in 50 degree steps up to 500 degree C. Um, and then I came back down in 50 degree steps. So we've got two sets of readings, uh, which will give some indication of repeatability. So you can see going up the range, um, ignoring the ambient, up from sort of 50 degrees to 300, the thermistor was reading around about 1.3, 1.4% lower than the PT100, PT1000, sorry. So I was a bit surprised. Um, so each of these readings I was leaving for five to six minutes for it to stabilise. Um, once it reached 500 then I started to come down um, in 50 degree increments. So again five to six minutes at each temperature. So so overall it took, it took around two hours for this test. So coming back down um, the error was still positive from, uh, sorry the difference the difference was still positive from 500 down to um, 400. Um, not as great as it was going up. 
uh, I have no explanations for that other than measurement error or sensor aging or something like that but you know we're talking a difference of 1.7% going up and 1.5% going down so hardly anything and then again um, yeah still coming back down the the uh, least difference between the two um, was about 350 degrees C minus 0.2% error difference minus 0.2 percent difference must stop saying error because we don't know which one was right um, we can assume that the PT1000 might be more accurate uh, but we don't know so there we have it in a nutshell um, I was surprised I thought the um, normal type thermistor would have been a lot further a lot more inaccurate or there would have been a bigger difference between the two over 300 degrees C because the data sheet says it's only good for up to 300 degrees C but this showed it was quite hard now of course that doesn't mean that it would last I mean it lasted a couple of hours would it last tens or hundreds of hours um, I don't know so probably um, if you wanted to run higher temperatures then you would probably still be better off with a platinum resistance type um, temperature sensor um, but I, I mean my take on this is a normal thermistor would be good for 300 350 degrees um, doesn't seem to be a problem um, most filaments have a plus or minus five degree tolerance on what you can print them at at least that some are, some are more plus or minus 10 degrees so I'll uh, I'll, I'll I'll say no more I'll leave uh, everyone to make their own conclusions and to make their own buying decisions but hopefully that data might um, might help so thanks for watching and um, as ever if you want to support support my work links down below for my paypal and patreon account and uh, until next time